Hey, welcome back everyone to your C++ tutorial series. Now before we dive in with some concepts here, there's a few things you guys need to know, especially if you're new to this channel. One, I like to split up content from on the computer screen to up here on the board, just so we can go over some concepts, make it real nice and easy, so when we go to code, we actually know a little bit about what's going on. Number two, I'm left-handed, so I don't really even know why I try writing up on the board because it's never readable, so. Sorry about that. <laughs> and number three is that I'm terrible at audio and video, so every single video, there's at least one thing wrong. So either you can't hear me right now or you probably can't see me because it's blurry or I forgot to hit record or something like that. But we'll see. So if you haven't seen these on-screen videos, hopefully you enjoy them and let's get started. But before we get started, I need to give a special thank you and shout out to our sponsor, Embarcadero C++ Builder. No, C++ Builder is not a soda. <laughs> C++ Builder is an IDE. So what is an IDE? It's basically a software suite that gives you everything you need to develop applications. So when you get C++ Builder, you can write your applications in the IDE, you can compile them, run them, and the beautiful thing is you can actually deploy the apps that you build with C++ Builder to iOS, Android, Mac OS and Windows. Yeah, that's right. So one C++ code base allows you to deploy to four different platforms. That's pretty awesome. C++ Builder has a community edition, so you can go get it. You can get it for free right now. Give it a try. It has powerful UI tools so you can make applications look perfect for each one of the platforms. Not only would it help you guys out, but it would help me out, right? Because, you know, they're, they're paying me money, right? So, <laughs> gosh. <laughs> I'm be so terrible at this. <laughs> Check it out, it'll definitely help you out. I'll leave a link for you in the description. And with that, let's get back to C++. Mmm. So good. So by the end of this video, I want you guys to understand the basic concepts of a C++ program. Right, so you're probably writing C++ programs because you're in a class, or you have to write C++ programs because you want to develop video games or develop a specific product. But my assumption is that you might have been copying and pasting, you don't exactly know what you're doing or what it means. So let's get started with that, and hopefully by the end you have a pretty good understanding. When you create your first C++ program, it's going to look a little bit something like this. You always have a main function. So this thing right here is known as a function, and it's called main. So main is the name of the function. Think of a function as a machine that does something. So, this is the machine, and sometimes it'll have an input, and sometimes it will have an output. The machine's name is main. So when we execute our program, it immediately automatically calls the main function, so it turns on our machine. Most of the time, we're not gonna have any input in this case, but we'll likely have some output. The code we have here really doesn't do anything at all, <laughs> so our machine's pretty pointless. But eventually, we're going to make this machine do lots of cool things. The return is the output. So our function is saying, hey, the output is zero. So what's coming out of this machine is zero. And that doesn't really mean anything to you right away, but the computer understands zero to mean everything went okay. So basically what happens is we turn on a machine and it says, hey, I'm done, everything went great. So you might see return zero, you might see return exit success. Does that have one C or two? That's another thing I can't spell. <laughs> no, it definitely has two. <laughs> and ultimately you could even get rid of this line. If you got rid of that line, it's just going to implicitly return zero. Basically nothing went wrong, so it worked. Inside of the function, we put what are known as statements. Statements are when we tell the computer to do something. So in this case, we're saying, hey, I want you to return zero. But you can put extra statements before the return. Before you say we're done, I want you to do all these other things. So for example, right here, I could say, see out, hello world. That is how we write to the console. And we end that statement with a semicolon, just like we end this one with a semicolon. So this STD, which by the way means standard, gosh, colon, colon, C out, this comes from somewhere, right? It, we don't just make it up. Like, how did we know to put that there? Well, in order for this to become available to us, we include it in our C++ program. Because of that, inside of your C++ program, at the top, you're going to have something that looks like this. 
So this IO stream inside of that, the C out is defined, right? So we can use C out because we're taking advantage of this IO stream, which stands for input to output stream. So this works because of what's known as the preprocessor. The preprocessor is something that happens before all of the code is compiled. And the preprocessor is basically going to take the content of this file and put it inside of our program to make it available for us. All right, so that's pretty good so far. But one thing we didn't talk about was this right here. This is known as the return type. So here is the return. This is the return type, and they're related. Because if you look at what we're returning here, we're returning a zero. And zero is an example of an integer. So the return type is int, which is short for integer. By the way, if you don't know what an integer is, it's just a number without any fractional parts. So something like 6.7 is not an integer. Six is an integer though, because there's not six dot anything, it's just six. So when we get into more complex C++ programming, we're gonna be writing functions that don't use just integers, but you know, it'll use doubles, it'll use arrays, it'll use all kinds of different things, custom types. And that's where things get exciting, right? Because this is like ground zero. We're building that foundational layer and we're just gonna start layering stuff on there like a stack of pancakes, but instead of pancakes, it's code. And instead of eating them, we have to debug it. And yeah, it's sounding less fun now, but trust me, it's gonna be a lot of fun because this is just the basics. So overall, what did we just talk about? Well, we have this main function. Functions are a big deal. We're gonna get a lot into those into this series. The main function returns zero because nothing broke, <laughs> and that zero is an example of an integer. Inside of the main function, before we say we're done, we want to output to the console. The way we do that is using C out and then using these uh, alligators, less than signs, <laughs> and saying hello world in double quotes, and this is going to take this string and put that on the console for us. This is all possible thanks to code that was already created by someone much smarter than us, or at least me, <laughs> who put it in this IO stream file, which we can include in our project. So this STD colon colon, that's something we're gonna be talking about in the next video. We're also gonna be talking about some other cool stuff which I forget about, so check it out guys, it's gonna be super awesome. That's right.